And I'm here with the, the producers and director. Start by introducing, by everyone to introduce themselves, really. Uh, hi, I'm Manish. Uh, I'm director of content acquisition at Prime Video India. Yes, hi, I'm Alia Bhatt. I am um, an actor slash producer, in this case, executive producer on Pocho. Richie? I'm Richie Mehta. I am the writer, director, creator, I guess executive producer as well, uh, of Poacher, um, which is an eight-part crime drama on Amazon Prime. I'm Ray Mansfield, uh, producer on Poacher, and I uh, work with QC Entertainment. Uh, Sean McKittrick, uh, producer on Poacher, and also QC Entertainment. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, I'd like to start my first question with Alia. Alia, this is your executive producer on this, and obviously having the the, the profile that you have in um, both India and around the world, this obviously brings like a, a bigger sort of, um, you know, watchability to this uh, series. How did you get involved in this? I think for starters, the the um, the show Poacher drew me to it. Mm. Um, I didn't need to be, um, you know, Convinced, convinced or um, reeled in. Uh, I kind of sort of jumped at Richie when we were speaking once. We met in 2022. He had just finished filming. Um, we were just chatting about everything under the sun and he told me about Poacher and I was intrigued and he let me into the world even more, showed me a couple of episodes and I was like, what can we do? Because I responded as a human being because yes, the show is called Poacher, but it's actually a very human story. It's a very human show. Um, and it touches all the right chords in a very entertaining, thrilling way. Um, so I, 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 I've been told in the past that I speak very loudly. So you can call <laughs> me that I'm, a, you can say that I'm a very nice loudspeaker for the show. Because um, I want everyone across the world to watch it on the 23rd of Feb. Okay. Uh, Richie, this is a really interesting thing. I, wasn't, I had no idea there were poachers in India at all. I, you know, we hear, I think it's more often that we hear about them more in Africa. Um, how did, what, what was it about this story that made you want to make this? Well, this landed on my lap. I was doing a documentary in 2015. And uh, by the way, I, I also didn't know there were a lot of... Oh, really? The wildlife okay. crime was an issue, to be honest, in India. Mm. So doing this documentary, which is crowdsourced, called India in a Day, um, where people all over the country would send me footage on one day on October 10th, 2015, and that was the shoot day. And I received a piece of footage, which was an ivory raid in Delhi. And it was uh, Kerala Forest Department officers and some Delhi police officers and some NGO workers who busted down a door in Delhi and found this massive cache of ivory. And they would, it was submitted to me. And so I, I was shocked by this. I didn't, I didn't know there was, there was an ivory smuggling and poaching problem in India. Mm -hmm. I called the NGO, I said, what is this? And they said, it was your shoot day. And we did the largest uh, ivory raid in Indian history on that day. So we thought we'd send you the footage. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't use this. I need to give it the proper context, but give me a few years, I'll come back. I need to understand more of what this is about and I'll do a whole project on it. So I was very intrigued from the beginning. And then as I got to know the, the people involved in that case, um, I realized it is a massive, I mean, it's, look, I'm using India as an example, but it's a global problem. Yeah. I mean, it is everywhere in the world, including here, including the United Kingdom, there's poaching. Um, and, and smuggling and, and purchasing, it's all part of, it's, it's a mafia. And the mafia is also tied to um, arms smuggling and human trafficking and narcotics. It's the it's same kind of roots. So when I saw all of that, but at the end of the day, this is not a renewable resource like arms and narcotics are. They can continue to be grown. This is once these species are gone, they're gone. Um, so I was so intrigued by also the job title, wildlife crime fighter. I didn't know that existed anywhere in the world. And when I got to know them, I just thought, my God, talk about inspiration. Yeah. 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 Manish, can I ask you about your involvement again in this extraordinary series? Um, how did you come about getting involved in it? So I think this is about a year and a half now. Uh, and Richie reached out to us with this phenomenal story. Uh, and a bunch of meetings later with Sean and Ray and Richie. I think the first thing was about trying to understand what's the story. And the moment I heard about the story, it, it, I think I'd leave the part aside about uh, it is a great story, but it's more about the urgency of this is a story that must be told now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I chased Richie, you know, I met him in London last year. Uh, we discussed it in detail. We spoke about it creatively. And we believe that, you know, for us, Prime Video in India and worldwide, this was a story that we wanted to tell in both ways. We were, we're deeply penetrated in India. We serve and you know how vast India's 
Prime Video in India serves 99.9% .9 of the PIN codes. Mm. So it's a diverse and a deep set of penetration in India with customers and internationally. So uh, that's how it came about. I, my conversations with Sean and Ray, I think we've had very interesting and engaging conversations about what would happen to the show even before the show was locked with us? You know, how would we go about it? How would we take a show that's set in Kerala uh, and it's authentic, its actors are, you know, from the Kerala film industry. It's, uh, a lot of it is spoken in Malayalam, you know, which is the language in Kerala. But why do we believe it's, it's not just a Malayalam show, but it's a global show? Uh, and this is really how it, it, you know, it happened. And I think I'm excited about it finally locking in with us. And it's a story we're being able to tell. We're very, very proud of it. There's a strong female presence in the whole of, uh, of in the series because one of the main characters is a, um, a, a, a you know, an officer. Uh, a female. Department. Yeah. And how does that feel for you? Was that, did you have a hand in? In, in no, making that happen at all? Nothing. I had no hand <laughs> at all. My hand is right here where it is, which is just going to be used for the class. But how does that make you feel? It, it makes me feel as it makes me feel, which is that this is just the way it should be. Mm. Um, mm. She um, is... Nimisha is a fabulous actress, and I'm going to keep saying it, even though she must feel very uncomfortable when I keep saying because she doesn't like to pay mm. compliments, I believe. But she's a fabulous actor. But what she's done in Pocha is just unbelievable. She's mm. like heroic from the word go. She's vulnerable. She's she's strong. She's like uh, like you know she, she just takes you through every second with such authenticity. And I love to see characters like that, male and female. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with gender. I just love human beings being portrayed like that mm -hmm. um, on screen. Um, so as an audience, forget being a part of this as an executive mm -hmm. producer. As an audience, I'm, I'm floored by you know, all their performances. And mm -hmm. I just, I can't wait for the world to see it. Well, mm -hmm. Also with Namisha, she, she represents, she herself and then the character, again, these are, these are wildlife crime fighters don't get a lot of notice or recognition for what they do. They do yeah. it because they feel it's the right thing to do, and they're very happy to stand back and not get the spotlight, mm -hmm. which is how she is, which is how the character is, mm -hmm. which is how these guys are, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, and that's, how, like, that's also, that's, sorry? We don't speak. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, will, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, my, I think my next question is going to be for either of you or both of you, if you could answer it. And it's, uh, do you, did you instantly see the sort of the universal appeal of this story when, when it was being offered uh, to um, Amazon Prime? Well, no, I so the, the order of operations is I came up with it, and then I spoke to them, yeah. and then we made it. Oh, right, okay. And then oh, went to... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so okay. it was... This is, this, is the, this is the direction, the wave. <laughs> okay. Actually, okay. it's a circle like this. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how, um, how was it for you uh, sort of getting involved in this? As I say, did you see the universal appeal to it straight away? Absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, it was Richie. We wanted to work with Richie. Mm -hmm. But um, what we really love to do is find, you know, entertainment with purpose. Mm. And this was just one of those stories that, you know, it is a global story. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the themes and the purpose of the show really just drove it. And so we put all of our trust in Richie. I mean, it really just started with the three of us and carried all the way through. Yeah, one of the, uh, speaking of the global idea, one of the primary themes of the story is how the entire planet and humanity are interconnected every action has a, an equal and opposite reaction. And so it always seemed like a global show to us. Having seen Delhi Crime, we really viewed uh, Richie's style as a global filmmaking style. Mm -hmm. And we felt like, we, because when, when we got involved, it was just Richie saying, I want to do a show about wildlife crime. Mm -hmm. That was when we said yes. Mm -hmm. That was it. That's all there was. Richie yeah. and I want to do a show about wildlife crime. And we <laughs> said, let's do it. And it was, and it felt global from that very first conversation with him. Mm -hmm. uh, um, seen, have you had much reaction to, because you've just released the, the, um, the trailer for it. How has been the reaction in India to start with? And how, do you find that this story was well known at all? Or is that completely like, has taken people by surprise? Um, I don't think the story was well known. I mean, you know, we're not making anything up. It's in terms of the, the, the crime aspect of it. It's documented and it's, it's public mm -hmm. domain material. And a lot of it was, most of it was firsthand research I did with people. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there are obviously people in the Kerala Forest Department, the NGO workers and Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. And, you know, they know about this case, of course. 
um, beyond that, how it's being seen now, I've been so busy, I don't even know how it's seen. <laughs> yeah. I honestly have no I mean, that's something no, you, I've I, been tracking, you guys isn't can. It? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been good, but we don't, we don't, we don't speak yeah. before it's out, but it's been Exactly, good. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same thing like I'd want to add, and you know, the consumer reaction so far, I think this is the first time, and you know, we've had great stories before. But it's the first time we're trying, we're seeing consumers own the story. Yeah. And they're really owning the narrative and they're starting to believe. And they, of course, it's not, you know, it's not uh, unknown to people that, yeah. you know, we're one of the species on the planet. But, you know, what is the way that we can contribute? And just being able to watch this story, talk about it, and bring the conversation back has been such a meaningful, you know, part that the trailer has played, in the, at least in the first go. The second was, I believe the, the trailer carries this one theme, you know, and one inherent theme, which is murder is murder, irrespective of the species. And we have to start acknowledging, we have to start acting. Um, and then I think the last part about, you know, it's still being a, like a deeply gripping crime narrative, right? Like that's what has been, I think, well appreciated. So it's not just thought provoking, but it's highly entertaining edge of the seat, you know? So consumers are not just like happy that the story is being told. It is based on, you know, on true events, uh, but they're also excited about how entertaining a watch it's gonna be. I think also there, look, one thing I think the trailer does do, and I, it just gives a taste of what the series really is. There's a reason the series is eight episodes, you know, o o yeah. over six and a half hours. The main theme is not a mystery. It's, you know, we shouldn't be, sh shooting elephants and buying their product. <laughs> we should, you know, it, it, we should have more love towards all other species. That's easy, that's an easy one. We've seen many Attenborough specials that have talked about it mm. and, and I feel for those. Um, but there's a reason this is that long. There's much more complexities to it. It's a, it is a story about human beings, yeah. in fact. Mm. And um, I think people are seeing that, that there is the crime thriller aspect of it, which is the propulsive, which should, you know, our hope is just a, a rip roaring ride, but, um, I think people are saying, oh, this is not just the same theme we have seen before. There's something way more to this. And there is. There's something way more to this. And I can't even, I can't say it because it's, it's too complicated to say. I can say it in six and a half hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. But you're not a, you can't say. Um, has this made, this, bit, this is a question to all of you, really. Has working on this made you want to be involved more in the sort of, in, in, in these kind of, like, with NGOs or with nature uh, as a whole and sort of in protecting the, the you know, uh, endangered species, even around the world or just in India? How's well, to, I mean, it makes me want to continue to support these people who are literally risking their lives to save all of us. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it was revelatory in a way to learn, you know, that these, yeah, these, real these, people. these, these are real people. They're out there every day fighting to save our environment um, and risking their lives and their families' security and everything. So it, it, it's inspiring in that way. And I, I think using a platform like this with a global place like Amazon, it, mm -hmm. it's just going to help bring attention to it and hopefully bring financial support to it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same way? Uh, uh, same. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, for, certainly for me, after I did Delhi Crime, which is an urban, a very dark urban uh, story, um, I made a decision that I wanted to immerse myself in a world I wish to see. Mm -hmm. I want to surround myself with amazing people inspiring people and an environment that, that is worth preserving. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden it starts to infect your DNA. Mm -hmm. um, I think if, if, we are, if we find ourselves amongst people or in environments that are actually draining us and not giving, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's, that's the beginning of, of the end mm -hmm. in a way. So on, on the one hand, we have to fight to save the world that exists, but also you have to fight, individually, you have to find a way to create the world around you. Yeah. That, that you want mm. to be your life experience. It's a very short life we have. I agree. I think everybody's put it very beautifully. And I think, you know, one of the, um, one of the things I find amazing about being anybody in, in the creative industry is that you really have the power to, um, and I'm not going to say influence because that's something that we say a lot, but the influence is not something that comes immediately sometimes. It just, mm. like he said, it becomes a part of your conscience, perhaps your DNA. You may not do something about it immediately, but the the more aware we are about what we're influencing people's minds with, eventually that will kind of construct into a society perhaps that is just kinder, more loving, more together, and more, you know, 
coexist. Um, and I think that is the intention, and that's the intention with which I said, okay, listen, I want to come and support this with all my might, uh, because it's a, it's a story that should be seen. I think in this hectic pace of life, this concrete jungle we live in, and uh, you know, some things that we take for granted, right, like just our ecosystem around us, this show makes me pause and think, and I know, you know, I have an eight-year son, eight-year-old son who's seen a lot of this wildlife now, mm -hmm. but I want, uh, you know, his children to see it. And, yeah. and, and if we don't act now, it makes me want to act and do something now so that it continues and it's not just, you know, um, you know it turns out to be an endangered species, which is uh, not good for all of us. Yeah, I think my very last question I'd like to finish on is to ask you, Alia and you, Richie, if there is a possibility of you two working on uh, an, another, um, you know, project together, maybe for either for Amazon or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Why not? Uh, but, you know, we are very instinctive, organic people. We don't do projects. We do something that comes naturally mm -hmm. to us. So if, you know, life has got us together at this point, it's kind of the reverse. We're not really acting. I'm not, he's not directing me. I'm not acting. Oh, yeah. But I'm here promoting his, yeah, you know, yeah. something that he's created. So it's a unique beginning of a relationship, but it is the beginning. Yeah. Look, if, if, <laughs> if, if a handful of people across India who speak different languages can come together to try and avert um, species extinction, it's possible. Hmm. Anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me work with Ali again. Yeah, agreed. Thank you very much all for your, uh, for your responses and uh, congratulations on a fantastic series. And thanks again uh, for bringing this to sort of, uh, you know, to, you, to uh, the world really, to, 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 to know more about um, what's happening. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! Hey, <laughs> that's what they all say. Hey you guys!